Welcome to Tripod, Improved Photography's Nature Photography Show. This show is for the weekend photo warriors, the wave a flashlight around in the black of nighters, and the F-16 users. This is Tripod. Hey everybody and welcome back to Tripod. I am here with my buddy Nick Page. Ha, there he is. And we are talking about the best 25 and actually 27 uh, gadgets for landscape photographers. We are going to waste no time and we are going to blow through these lists. These are things that we're actually using when we're out there in the field. The very first one that I want to share with you is called atmosphere aerosol uh if you've listened to the improved photography podcast you know i love this product uh basically it just adds fog wherever you go all you just spray it (laughs) crazy and then you have this awesome atmosphere fog uh in in the area now it's obviously not going to be enough for a whole landscape to do that But it absolutely is enough for one of those intimate little landscapes. So if you're shooting a little trickle of water and a little branch over it, absolutely. You know, you can cover an area that's, oh, maybe 10 meters uh, square. You could totally cover that with atmosphere aerosol and get the light streaks coming in. Uh, This is something that costs 20 bucks. Uh, It's only available in the U.S. right now, but I'm sure it'll be available in other countries soon. Definitely worth a buy. It costs 20 bucks. Very cool. So my first one is actually going to be a length of rope. I know it sounds really random, but there's so many applications for a good piece of rope when you're a landscape photographer. Um, this past weekend, or maybe it was two weeks weekends ago, I went and photographed uh, several different waterfalls in the in the Columbia River Gorge. And there's just lots of times when the slope is too steep or too muddy. Uh, there was actually a, this rock wall that I had to climb down and I am not a rock climber at all (laughs) and this rope actually allowed my husky self to get down that slope and get out of there uh, in you know in the the fewest number of pieces possible so a length of rope is one of those things that you can kind of have in your car and if you're going to a spot where you know it's like kind of iffy if you can you can know you can get down it but can you get out so taking the length of rope strapping into your backpack a lot of times it's really worth the extra effort and that little bit of extra weight very cool the next one is a card case for your sd cards our comp- compact flash whatever i have two of them i have one made by pelican that's waterproof and stuff and then i have another one that's just a cheap flimsy material one I might actually recommend that if you're using SD and CF cards, that you just get a cheap one because it's lighter. And, you know, it's not like a, a, a Pelican uh, card case is going to weigh so much that you aren't going to be able to make it up the hill. But if you buy everything heavy in your in your arsenal of photography tools, your bag is going to be loaded down. So wherever you can save a little ounce here or there, mm-hmm. you might as well do it. And so with an SD or compact flash card, it's going to be just fine in the in the little material <laughs> one. The only way that I would recommend the Pelican case is if you're flying something like a DJI fan and you're using those micro SD cards like go on a cell phone they can get lost pretty easy so it's nice to have a hard case where it definitely fits in yeah absolutely so the first uh, phone app of the day there's several that I use quite often but the newest one in my phone is called my radar and um, typically I use weatherbug for most of my weather stuff but my radar has a really really good um, radar for monitoring uh, storms and weather systems as they go through your area um, it works really well it's really fast it doesn't like tax your phone like some of the other weather apps can. Um, so I'm really liking my radar, um, really good phone app. It's, I know it's for Android. It's probably for iOS, uh, but check that one out. I love that particular app. I haven't checked that one to see if it's, if it's exactly available on iOS, but I'm on iOS and the one that I use is storm. And it sounds like it's the same kind of thing. It's showing Mm -hmm. the actual radar sweeping across. And that's so helpful when you're out shooting a landscape and you're trying to plan Am I going to have clouds? Because, you know, you're in the hotel at three o'clock in the afternoon and you say, should I go out or I'm kind of tired? You can Mm -hmm. actually know if there are clouds coming. Just looking at, you know, just Googling the weather and saying it's going to be partly cloudy is not really good enough to know for landscape photography. And like this this past weekend, I was out chasing lightning around and 
uh, when you're trying to determine where the lightning is going and where it's coming from, uh, radar is really the only way to really easily see the path it's taking. And what's cool about that is you can see the path that it's taking and then you can say, okay, it looks like it's going to head to this particular iconic location. And the only way that you can get a really awesome shot at an iconic location is to get that really cool weather system coming through. This is how you can tell where the weather is going to be. And it just, it, good weather makes for good photos. And yeah, so my radar is a really, really good app for that. Very cool. The next one that I would recommend is a Rothko Army Camp uh, camp stool. Now there are lots of little camping chairs and stuff. And most of them, even though they fold up would be much too big to take with you, uh, for doing landscape photography. You know, you don't want to bring the whole house with you, but a lot of times you're going to be waiting for an hour until sunrise or until conditions are right. And so if you can be comfortable, I find that I actually do wait, uh, for the good light. And so a little tiny, super light backpacking camp stool weighs almost nothing. And you can just chuck it literally in a pocket of your of your bag and sometimes it really is nice not definitely not something i bring with me all the time but uh, mm -hmm. nice to have so another thing that i take take with me fairly often but not all the time is either some protein bars or some cliff bars something like that like a lot of times when you're a photographer and you're waiting for the weather or you're waiting for something to happen sunset or blue hour whatever it is just taking a little bit of food and water with you can like make the difference between out there and being like, you know, impatient and tapping your toe and not really waiting long enough to get a good shot and being comfortable. And, but if you have that food with you, you can be comfortable. You can kind of just be hanging out, enjoying yourself, not starving, not thirsty. So taking a little bit of water with you or a cliff bar, a protein bar, something like that um, makes the time go by faster and it makes you more patient as a photographer photographer and you'll get better photos if you're patient. So, uh, protein bars and cliff bars. The next that I would recommend is the thingama, uh, tripod wrench. I've mentioned this on the improved photography podcast. It's just a little wrench. Uh, it fits the Allen wrench on the bottom. It looks like a square, but it actually is an Allen wrench on the bottom and then a flathead, uh, you know, for a flathead screw. Uh, so no matter what, you can just put this on your on your keychain, and then you are ready at any moment to tighten up your 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 uh, your L plate or your your tripod plate on your quick release plate on the bottom of the camera. That's a really important thing. It's happened to me, and it's probably happened to every photographer uh, that you don't have anything, especially if I'm in another country and the coins are a little bit too big to fit in, and mm -hmm. you can't tighten up your plate, and it's just rattling around for the whole shoot. So it is nice to have something, whatever you're going to use, even if it's just a simple Allen wrench, to be able to tighten up that plate. Absolutely. So another thing that I try to take with me at every single outing is some kind of uh, remote release. I used to use cable releases that were actually connected to my camera, but I've recently um, kind of, well, actually I lost it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to replace it. And when I replaced it, I replaced it with this Velo wireless uh, trigger system. Um, I have a cam ranger as well, and I don't really like having to use my phone to trigger my camera. It just seems like more hassle. You have to sit there and connect and do all of that stuff. And then I have my phone all tied up and I can't be doing other things. But with this wireless release, it's very simple. It, it mounts to your cold shoe, plugs into your camera normally, and then you have your little wireless release where you can sit in a car where it's nice and warm and toasty, or maybe it's raining outside or whatever. You can sit in your car and trigger it, or if you want to take one of those really cool shots where you are in the shot, but you're like way far away, you don't have to hit your 10 second timer and then sprint to your location. Uh, you can go way out there, take your time, put it on two second timer and this thing I think has a, a, a range of like 300 to maybe I think it might even be more than that uh, 300 feet um, so you can go way into your scene you can trigger your camera from it uh, you can use it in bulb mode and it's like a $35 item so I really like this Velo wireless shutter release um, it's nice to not have to sprint into your scene when you're, you know, on the edge of a cliff or something. It's probably not wise to be running. And sometimes 10 seconds doesn't give you enough time to get into your shot. So uh, wireless shutter release is really, really handy. 
All right, a couple that are a little bit more obvious now. Uh, first, your filter pouch, and we talked about this in the last episode of Tripod. Uh, basically, what you're going to need is a neutral density filter and a polarizer. All the others you can probably do without, just kind of depends on what you think. Now, gloves are uh, obvious are an obvious thing that you're going to want when it's cold. These are the Valerit photography gloves that both Nick and I own. That the yes. company sent it to us, um, and we really like them. They hold a a little SD card or an extra battery in them. Uh, they have multiple fabrics, so it doesn't like get hot and they end up stinking. Uh, <laughs> and you can get your fingers out to use the camera. Even if it's summer, uh, it's easy to forget the gloves because it's you know generally warm outside, but then you go up in the mountains and it's cold. And if you're uncomfortable, you're not going to stay and wait for the good light. The next is uh, peck pads, just these cheap lens wipes, whatever kind you use. I like these peck pads because you can take it and throw it away and you don't have to worry about dust getting on them. Uh, mm. So get some kind of lens wipe, especially if you're around water, shooting waterfalls, something like that. And another is you're going to want a really good coat. Now I'm going to link in the show notes uh, to a coat that I bought on Amazon for like $30 a couple of years ago. Um, and it is awesome. It ke- It's so lightweight. Uh, it's cheap and it has kept me warm in some of the craziest situations in Iceland with, I mean, literally 50 mile or mile an hour winds. You literally couldn't stand up straight without it blowing you over. I mean, just frozen and rainy and if you get this coat i I think it's called polyfill that they have in the inside i can't remember what it's called Uh, but it has this special kind of fabricated down kind of stuff that makes it super lightweight and stays warm and then you just need a rain jacket with tape seams on the on the outside and i've worn that same thing in yellowstone when it was zero degrees and frozen and i was warm and in the summer when it's just really windy and i'll just wear the rain jacket because it has the tape seams and cut out the wind so it's kind of like the perfect combo that i've found for lightweight when you're traveling and actually keep you warm just using those two pieces instead of like four different layers you have to take off Uh, those ones have worked really well for me very cool so anytime you're shooting in like a really wet environment there's several different um layers of of protection that i yet like to use so the the first one is just it's kind of obvious just bring lots of lens cloths i like microfiber lens cloths a lot you can't have too many of them it seems like you lose them all the time so i try to you know hide about five or six in my bag at various places so i can't lose them all on the same trip it almost happens almost every single time so you can't have too many of them and then next i like to have a big well not big but a microfiber towel the reason i like having a microfiber towel with me is like if you're shooting around waterfalls you know you don't really need a rain cover a rain cover is kind of overkill for that situation but a lens cloth is going to get saturated really quick and if you have one of these in your in your coat pocket or whatever you can quickly dry the areas that you care about like you can even use it to wipe your lens but typically you want to use a lens cloth for that but these are really good for like drying the area on top of your camera like by your buttons and stuff you can quickly dry off your stuff and it's going to last a lot longer before it gets heavily saturated so one of these is really great always take with you a uh, a rain cover for your camera you never know when a rainstorm is going to hit and sometimes that's when the rainbows are popping out and amazing things are happening you don't want want to have to pack your camera up when the best stuff is happening so take a rain cover as well yeah i always carry a rain cover with me and i know because we've talked about this yep. we always carry the rain cover just in case and we never actually use it because if because if it's raining, conditions are pretty good. Like there's stuff happening in the sky. Yeah, exactly. So you don't want to take a second and put it on. You're like, no way, man. It'll be fine. I'm shooting. I know you do the same thing and I should put it on. I've killed it yeah. a couple of cameras this way, but um, <laughs> yeah. So it's smart to have, but I never it's, put them it's on. It's that extra step. And then I know uh, Jim uses peck pads. And uh, those work really well. You can clean your sensors and everything else with them. Um, I like these. These are made by Zeiss. You can get them at like Walmart or on Amazon. You get 50 of them for like $4 and they're pre-moistened lens wipes. They work really well for me. Anytime you get like oil or something from your face on the back of your LCD screen from put, smashing it against your face. Or if you've been in the rain and you get a little bit of rain on your front element, sometimes you get those rain spots like that hard 
hard water spot that uh, a, a lens cloth won't get off. And these pre-moistened wipes will get that off. So I take a few of these with me. And if it's been raining that night at the hotel, I just give my camera a quick wipe down and it looks clean and new and everything's uh, fine and dandy. So I really like these lens, uh, lens pre-moistened wipes, but from Zeiss. Very and cool. they're cheap. I would recommend a labeler uh, for your photo gear. Uh, if you're out shooting with other photographers on a workshop and things, uh, it's inevitable that you end up just kind of, hey, try out this lens and I'll try out your lens for the day. And, and you know, you're in different people's cars and, and everybody's just kind of sharing everything on workshops. And so get a cheap $20 labeler. The one that I have is from Brother called the P-Touch. And just put a label on all your stuff that has your uh, name. And I've learned the hard way. I don't put on my phone number because in my videos, people read the phone number <laughs> and call me. It's crazy. A couple times I've had people call me. You know, I'm out with the family or whatever. And somebody will say, hey, I was watching your YouTube videos. Like, I got a shoot coming up this weekend. I got a couple questions for you. And it's like, what? <laughs> it's crazy. So That's maybe funny. put your email address on it or something like that. Uh, but anyway, your your name and a, and a phone number or whatever on all your gear, I think it's really nice. Nice. And also, if you're on a workshop, workshop instructors should bring these, but most don't. Just go buy a, like a $1 pack of my name is badges to, to yeah. stick on everybody. Hand it to them the first day, and then you don't have to feel bad when you forget everybody's names <laughs> on the <laughs> workshop. <laughs> So if you're if so if you're forgetful like Jim and you forget everybody's name, it's hard it, with so many people. That way you can just kind of give them to everybody you meet at various locations, whether you know them or not. Like, yeah, <laughs> give it way. to the park ranger, whatever. <laughs> exactly. My name is Park Ranger. Okay, so one of the most useful things that I've bought probably since I started photography is an L bracket. I love oh, yeah. a good L bracket. An L bracket is basically just a a a um, camera mount that go you strap it to your camera and you can you know ugh, i'm having a it's brain a quick fire. release plate that goes exactly. on the bottom of your camera but it also goes along the side of the exactly. camera so when you want to go in portrait orientation you just quickly disconnect the camera from the tripod flip the camera and then psh, you, you have a connector exactly. on the side as well yeah, there's so many times when, you know, you you set up your shot, you take all this time to craft it, get it level and stuff, and you get that horizontal shot, and then you're like, you know, I should get a vertical shot. And then instead of having to flop over your ball head and then you completely recompose your shot, you can just quickly, um, you know, un un disconnect your camera, put it into portrait orientation, strap it down, and you're good to go. And I love, and it's also really handy for panoramas because, you know, it's, while it's not perfect, at least you're going to be pivoting around the center of your tripod. And a lot of times, you know, uh, if you're shooting with a wide angle lens, it's going to be just fine for shooting panoramas. It's going to be uh, a lot better in the in the ways of, you know, parallax and all of that stuff. So it works really well for panoramas as well. So L bracket, you can get like a Sunway photo that won't break the bank. I think you're paying like 50 bucks for it rather than 150 bucks for Kirk um, or Arca Swiss. So uh, L bracket, totally worth the investment. Completely agree. I have two more and then I am tapped out. Uh, my <laughs> my uh, Pinochimo, every once in a while, it's the craziest thing. Portuguese will spring out. Like there's a word that will just <laughs> still come. It's weird. I haven't spoken Portuguese every day for years, but <laughs> every once in a while. Uh, the second to last um, uh, external battery is, uh, or thing is an external battery. Boy, it really rattled my head. Uh, and, you know, obviously it'll power your phone when you're out and shooting, which is also a safety thing. You want to be able to have that phone but also increasingly cameras are allowing you to charge the camera with a micro usb port mm -hmm. and so if you have uh, an external battery you could charge your camera some of the sony cameras have this and i wish every camera had this you could charge uh with a mini usb port that, that's really really nice to have 
Very and then cool. the last one that I would recommend is waterproof boots. Nick, I know you have some <clears throat> some uh, socks that you like. I want to hear th- uh, those. <laughs> uh, I, I know it sounds weird to recommend socks, but those are pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> but I also recommend waterproof boots because when you're walking through like a little water or just mud, uh, waterproof boots are nice because then your boots are stay mm-hmm. dry. You know, the inside of your boots are still dry. I know there's, what are they called? The Neo socks? What are those that you that you use? So I have the NRS, oh, NRS Boundary Neoprene Socks. It's a long name, but uh, basically they're, they're like a, a, uh, a wetsuit that goes up to your knee. And then you can put some like, you know, water, water shoes over the top of those. So you have some grip and then you are completely waterproof up to your knee. Not only are you waterproof, but it's, it kind of gives you some insulation there. So your legs stay warm. So I've taken these into like glacial runoff water. You know, it was like 20 degrees outside. We were up by Mount Hood and, you know, a foot of snow and I'm walking through the river and it didn't bother me at all. I was in there for 15 minutes, didn't bother me. And what's cool about these is for one thing, they, they roll up really small. You can stuff them inside your bag and then you just, you know, take a, a pair of like aqua socks with you as well to throw over the top of them so you can walk on rocks and stuff. Um, so they're light. Plus, uh, they, they keep you warm. And if the water does happen to go over the level of your knee where the top of that, that sock reaches, they're, they're watertight there. So they fit tight against your legs so water can't go down inside of them like they would like a muck boot or something. Because if you're wearing a muck boot and then you step into your hip bloop, or something, bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> exactly, they're going to fill up with water. These, these that won't happen. So, uh, and they're comfortable enough. You can just like take off and hike down a trail with them. They, they're comfortable. Um, so they're really nice if you're going to be shooting around water. Like if you're in Iceland, I'm definitely taking them to Iceland because there's going to be lots of times that we're going to be shooting around water, but it's going to be freezing cold and you don't want your bare foot anywhere nope. near that water. So these are going to be great for that because I can roll up my pants and not worry about getting getting completely soaking wet or freezing my toes to the point of, <laughs> of frostbite. So uh, I really like my NRS Boundary neoprene socks. And they're like 100 bucks. They're kind of spendy, and it's hard to pull the trigger on that. But, man, they are worth it. They're kind of a pain to put on, but once you get them on, they're, they're awesome. Yeah, those look so, great. And so if you combine those with a waterproof boot – you're golden because then if you just yes. get in a little bit of, of mud or just a you know a small amount of water, then your your feet stay your uh, shoes stay dry or whatever hiking boot you're wearing. And if you do go into really heavy into really uh, deeper water, then you're still dry anyway. So that's the mm-hmm. perfect combo is getting uh, both of those uh, waterproof. And then when you're on <clears> the beach and waves are crashing up in a creek and mud and whatever, you can go anywhere and yep. you don't have to worry, which means better shots. Yep. And you're going to have more patience to get the shot that you went, want rather than like my feet hurt, my feet hurt. And yep. you just like rattle off a couple shots and then jump out of there. So you're going to have more patience, even if it's not freezing cold. I cannot believe that we made it this far into our list without mentioning a headlamp or a flashlight. A flashlight is like kind of a safety thing. You need to have one in your camera bag because oftentimes we're out shooting sunset or we're out shooting the stars and you if you're hiking back in the dark, that's not only like not super enjoyable because the lions and tigers and bears, oh my, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's a safety thing. You might trip, break an ankle, and then you're out there until somebody comes and rescues you. If you have a flashlight, you're going to be walking more safely and uh, it's just smart. So I like to wear, uh, because I always wear hats, their Energizer makes like a clip on uh, headlamp that I wear pretty often. And then they're making these little LED tactical flashlights so much smaller that I like to throw one in the bag as well. So I have two if I need them. Very cool. And, and a first and, aid kit, that'd be a nice one to have and to, and while we're talking about safety. Exactly. So if you break an ankle, you can put a Band-Aid on it and walk out. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. You're good. Ten broken exactly. ribs. But if you've got a Band-Aid, I mean, what, what can withstand a Band-Aid? Exactly. Uh, one that I'm anxious to try. I've never actually done this before, uh, but I'm anxious to try a paint pole uh, and an adapter for landscape photography. So I mentioned as I'm doing real estate photography that I, I bought the DJI Phantom. Um 
and didn't love the camera quality. I looked at the Inspire, but I'm going to wait till the next version. But I was getting a couple ideas for some aerial uh, kind of nature photos. The problem with aerial photography is there's never a foreground. The foreground is air. Mm -hmm. And so the photos just aren't as compelling sometimes. Um, so I, I started to think about what could we put in the foreground in the air? And I thought, man, it'd be so cool to like, you know, if you have a windmill or something uh, at an old barn or something to like shoot mm -hmm. from above the windmill and the windmill could be a foreground and, uh, you know, uh, up on a, a, a tree, you know, a bird's nest or something. I don't know. Just got some, got some different ideas. And then I thought, you know, with all of those ideas that I'd thought about, really all I need to do is get up, you know, maybe eight meters, uh, eight, eight meters up or whatever. And I thought, you know, that's about a paint pole uh, plus my height hold, holding it. And so I've been using this for real estate photography and a lot of people do. There's a little adapter you get to attach the camera. And I thought, you know, I'm going to at least chuck it in the car the next couple of times I go on, uh, do area, uh, go do landscapes because sometimes I, I could see it happening. It'd be cool just to try out. No, definitely not something I would bring every time, but could be kind of cool in a couple situations. For example, the Snake River Landing, you know, where Ansel Adams shot the famous mm -hmm. photo of the, the curve in the, in the river um, in Yellowstone. Well, that shot doesn't exist anymore. You can't get that photo because the trees are too tall in that spot. But I wonder if mm -hmm. you get up another 25 feet or so if we could do it. And so anyway, some ideas like that that uh, just kind of got me thinking about landscapes. That's very cool. Another little thing that I like to take with me, uh, it's kind of, you know, going back to the to the uh, uh, Allen wrench idea or the thingama is I like to take a multi tool with me. Um, maybe not in my camera bag, but at least in the glove box. But a multi tool comes in handy a lot of times because, you know, sometimes you need a screwdriver. Sometimes you need to cut your arm off because you got it trapped in a rock crevice. You know, having some kind of uh, multi-tool is kind of another safety thing that is really handy. Sometimes you get your, you know, your your rope tied around something that you can't untie it from, which almost happened to me last weekend, and I had to cut the end off. I had a multi-tool, so I didn't have to leave my rope. And that's nice when you hike in a couple miles to a location and then that happens. Um, also handy and, for cutting your arm off, just in exactly. case. Exactly, and right? cutting your arm off. Yeah. Like you want to use the saw for that particular one. The knife doesn't cut it. Um, and so last but not least for me is the photographer's ephemeris. It's a mouthful, but it's a really, really useful app for photographers. Um, it, it shows you when and where and uh, and the direction that both the moon and the sun are going to be rising from a particular location. It, help, it lets you save locations. You can kind of save all of your favorite photo shoots. And it shows you exactly when and where the sun is going to be rising on any particular day from now into the future. So the photographer's ephemeris is really, really useful both for mobile and for um, the desktop version. So I love that app. It's useful for all photographers. Very cool. Well, that does it. 30 photography gadgets in uh, in uh, probably about 30 minutes. Thanks for <laughs> joining us on this episode of, of uh, Tripod. I hope you enjoyed it. But also we want to mention Nick has some tours coming yes. up in the Palouse that I am I'm eyeing. I've, I've got to make it up there and, and shoot a little bit. Um, so this is in the northern, northern Idaho, eastern Washington kind of area. Uh, mm -hmm. There are just some amazing, amazing locations. If you look through Nick's portfolio, you're going to see them. Uh, and you're, you're doing a workshop up there for a couple days and super inexpensive. Looks like a great deal. Yeah. So, you know, the Palouse area is my home. It's where I grew up. And, uh, so I know the area, I know the homeowners, I know the owners of particular barns and stuff. So one of the things that kind of sets my Palouse tour apart from all the other Palouse tours out there is that I actually live here and I know the area better than they do. They, I, I live here year round. They come here twice a year. So, um, that, that gives me the ability to actually get access to a lot of the barn areas and a lot of places that people don't shoot very often because they don't know it exists. So um, we go around, we shoot lots of barns, cool old abandoned, abandoned houses, the beautiful Palouse Falls, um, Steptoe Butte. There's so many amazing places. 
And uh, yeah, so I had a couple seats open up. I think we've got like one available on the first tour and maybe two or three available on the second tour. They're filling up pretty fast. So if you want to join us on that, you can go over to nickpagephotography.com, click on workshops, and you'll see all the information there. So I hope you can join us. Looks awesome. Looks like it'll be a great workshop. Thanks everybody for joining us on this episode of the podcast and we'll see you in another seven days.